Hello. Hey, Abdullah. How are you? Good. How's it going? I'm fine, my friend. We are live on air, actually. <laughs> oh, live. Oh, okay. Yeah. For those who do not know uh, Abdullah, uh, uh, um, let me see if I can show uh, your channel in the screen so people they will know. Or you like to show yourself in the camera? I'm not sure. Uh, um, Abdullah is an. How long is your show going on for? Uh, actually, I'm here for maybe an hour or more. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay, yeah. let me call you back in 10 minutes. All right, no problem, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Abdullah Samir is an ex-Muslim. And I will try to find you his channel. Abdullah Samir. Here we go. Okay, and this is his... Hello, everyone. Uh, I wanted to share my story in some details. I was kind of hesitating to okay, you know, really make a video, but, but you know what? Give me a second. Know, I thought maybe I should do that because few people thought maybe you know this. Maybe I'm not a real person. Some people thought there was some Jewish conspiracy going on, and you know, all sorts of ideas out there. So I wanted to make a make a video to show that I am I'm a real person. You know, I was born <clears throat> I was born into an Ismaili family. My dad is Ismaili. My mom was Sunni. And I was raised in a smiley. And um, around the age of maybe 18 or so in high school, I, I found Islam. Some of my friends invited me to read the Quran, and I started reading it. Um, I started praying, you know, what was called namaz or salah. And, um, and I got really excited. I found the Quran, and I got really excited about it. I really liked it. And I said, hey, this is God's message to me. I didn't look into it too critically. I felt like, you know, I looked into a little bit of other religions and stuff, and I felt... It's just instinctive, and I felt like this is something you know good, something I want to follow uh, God's message. And I started praying five times a day, and you know eventually I took a deep dive into Islam. I, I started following it with all my heart and mind. You know, within like a um, few years after that, I started university, and then I got married, and then you know um, what else? And then I started working. So when I was working, I tried my best to implement Islam. You know, I would pray even at the office. I would find a stairwell. I would go and pray wherever I could, you know, and oh, I would get, if, if you had a prayer room, you know, I would invite other people to come pray with me. And even at university, you know, in the middle of exams, I would stop to pray. I would ask them, can I please get up? I need to say my prayers for Maghrib especially. And yeah, I was following it to the best of my ability, to be honest. I sincerely believed in Islam. Um, I used to give out some DVDs. I, I made some DVDs of my own with some Islamic videos. I used to go from uh, mosque to mosque, uh, videotaping lectures and at conferences and and I wanted to promote it because I felt truly in my heart this was a, the true religion. I wanted people to go to Jannah. I wanted Allah to be pleased with me. And, you know, I wanted to follow the Prophet. And so that's what I did. I created a website, lightuponlight.com. And, you know, eventually another one, worstbywordsquran.com, to, to promote Islam because I believed in it. And um, there's still a bunch of videos on there, if you go and see, of um, that I, I videotaped myself some of the lectures and some of the other ones I got permission from others to put online so that's that's what I was doing and um, I when I started working you know I would avoid jobs that that were involved with riba you know anything to do with the bank uh, I wouldn't work for any banks whatsoever I wouldn't work in the media industry like television or music personally I would avoid listening to I wouldn't listen to music I wouldn't let my kids listen to music I even put my kids in Islamic school um, you know for as much as I could afford it even though it was expensive here in Canada. But I mean, that's what you do, right? You're, if you're a Muslim and you truly believe in it in all your heart. As well, you know, I used to rent. I didn't have a mortgage because I believed in it. Now, you know, there came a point in my life where I started having a little bit of doubt here and there, small doubts. And eventually, you know, I was at one year, two years ago, um, I had some doubts. I was discussing with a friend online and he mentioned that a lot of the stories in the Quran actually come from Jewish folktales. And I was very surprised about that, like Jewish folktales. I said, no, no, no. You mean it came from the Bible or the Hebrew Torah. And when I looked into it, I found out that actually a lot of the stories are from the Talmud, which is actually the Jewish commentary and the Jewish stories. And the, basically the rabbis, you know, commentary of the, of the traditions. And so it doesn't really much have a d divine origin. And, you know, I also had a big problem with the story of Dulkanin, you know, these, this tribe of how Dulkanin, he trapped this tribe of uh, people, Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, behind a giant uh, gate built of copper and um, copper and iron. And 
and I was wondering, where is this place? How come we can't find it? You know, we, we have Google Earth and all that. And how come we can't find it? So that was another doubt. And I actually, I believe, left Islam for one day. But then I decided, you know what? I'm going to put my doubts aside. You know, I, I'm Muslim. I want to go to Jannah. I want to believe in Allah. And, and I became Muslim for one more year. And then last year, so one year ago, is when it truly actually, when I truly left Islam for good. Um, I, was in a, I was in Ramadan and it was, I was at a pre-iftar halaqa. Um, and the Sheikh was saying, you know, Allah holds up the sky without any pillars. And this brought back all my doubts about, you know, if the Quran is truly from, from God, the creator of the universe, the, you know, the, no, the one that knows all things, why is he describing the world in a way that, you know, was the seventh century understanding of the world? Like the sky doesn't have, okay, we know the sky doesn't have any pillars that you can see, um, but there's no need for pillars. Like we're, we're just a ball in space. Sky is just, it's just emptiness. It's just emptiness of space. So there's no, there's no need for any pillars visible or invisible. And you know, there's many things like that, like the, the orbit of the sun and the moon, why Allah describes an orbit of the sun and the moon. Like we know the orbit of the moon is around the earth. That makes sense. But the orbit of the sun, like what orbit would that be? You know, I looked into this and I found, well, there is an orbit. It's a 300 million year orbit of the sun around the Milky Way galaxy, which has nothing to do with humanity whatsoever because it's completely useless. But of course, at that time, you know, the Muslims would have thought that. Okay, well, Abdullah is ready, so we will call him and we will hear from him. Hello. Yes, Abdullah. I will put you in the screen so people. I was playing actually your video. Okay. I was playing your uh, playing your uh, uh, video about you about why you left Islam, so people will will learn about you a little bit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Abdullah, what, first I'm happy that you contacted me, and I'm glad to have you. And uh, people are listening. I will give you the mic. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on here. I'm uh, a little bit taken back. I thought we were going to do it in uh, a specific uh, time in the future, but. Hey, better, better uh, late than never, I guess. Uh, we can do it now. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome, my friend. Anytime, feel free to call and you're home. All right. <laughs> okay, sounds good. You do not need invitation. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's good. Uh, let us see if some people want to... Uh, first, let me show the, the channel for uh, uh, Abdullah Samir. This is his channel for those who like to watch his videos. And he's an ex-Muslim, as he uh, spoke about himself, as you see. Um, and uh, if anyone have a question for Abdullah, feel free to ask question and I'm sure he will be happy to answer. Yeah, so um, just to give a little bit of background on myself, I know you guys were watching my video, but uh, I've been an ex-Muslim for about, uh, let's see, 2015. So coming up to four years now, um, I left Islam. Well, well, to step back, first of all, I was very, I, I wasn't born as a Sunni Muslim. I was born as an Ismaili Muslim, which is like a kind of far out sect in Islam. And then I switched to Sunni Islam. And then what happened is I deep dived into Islam. I got involved in conferences and I was recording. I had two major uh, big websites. Uh, one of them was known as lightuponlight.com. Mm -hmm. And the other one was uh, worstbyworstquran.com. So I can actually show you um, one of my websites. Hold on one second. Let me see if it's working. My screen sharing. Oh, no, not that one. Hold on. Uh, you can send it to me later in the... In the sure, sure. I will, I will so yeah, it's, it's just uh, lightuponlight.com. So uh, I built this website uh, back in, I think, 2006. And I wanted to do it to help the Muslim Ummah. So I wanted to actually uh, bring you know, my technology skills and use my technology skills to, to give dawah mm. and to spread Islam. So this is what happened to me. And, uh, but eventually I was able to leave Islam because just to, you know, make it very quick, uh, back in 20, 2015, I was uh, having some discussion online on Facebook. So people that think that these discussions don't work, I was actually having these discussions and there was a guy that told me that he wanted to convert to Islam. And he was a Christian guy. And he said he looked into Islam and he found out that Islam actually had all of these Jewish folktales that were copied into Islam. So because of that, I was like, no, 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 I'm going to convince you. 
So I started looking into it, and then I realized that wow, there's some there's some problems here. The Quran actually does have stuff that's copied from Jewish folk tales. And then I started to keep looking, and I kept re- reading more about Islam. And but then I decided I I still want to be Muslim. I don't want to leave Islam because these are just doubts that I have, and you know I'm not ready to just leave the religion just like that. So then what I did was I I actually um, became Muslim again for one more year. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and and I just buried all my doubts. So this was in 2014. I buried all my doubts, and I said. Whatever these little issues I have, you know, maybe there's some explanation for it or something, and I just let it go. And then one year later, in 2015, in the mosque, um, the Imam was uh, in Ramadan was 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 quoting from the Quran, and he was saying something like, "The Quran, you know, scientists are so dumb, you know, they don't even know. Even Allah knows better than scientists, and you know, Allah says He holds up the sky without any pillars." And Allah says this, and Allah says, you know, all of these these strange things he was mentioning, right? Um, so what happened was I was like amazed, like how can he say that? How can he say all of these things about Islam? And all my doubts came back. All my doubts came back, right? And so I, um, I, I decided that I have to look into this thing, right? I have to look into uh, what the issues are in Islam, right? And then, you know, sky pillars, like for example... Uh, you know, it says that he created the heaven without any pillars that you can see. Correct. So this was like troubling to me because how does Allah say that he created the sky without any pillars that you can see when sky is just space, right? right. So that's like one example. That's one example, but but that that's how my journey started. So I, I, do, you, do you have any questions or what do you think? Uh, well, you know, uh, the, the funny, by the way, the Muslims, they made articles about this. And they they cut the part where it says you cannot see. <laughs> I don't know if you saw yeah. that article, right? They claim science. They make videos. <laughs> they say, right? Yeah, they say you say uh, they say Allah. He said, look what he says, and he quote for you only the part where it yeah. says Allah. He created, yeah. and you know the sky without pillars, but they don't see the. Yeah. They don't. Uh, they stop here. They will not show you the part where it says which you cannot see. But anyway. I don't know if you know about the story of uh, uh, the mountain of Qaf. No. Well, the mountain of Qaf, uh, 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 you know, simply is a mountain surrounding the earth. And this mountain is uh, uh, like, uh, uh, it's a blue color, and this is why we cannot see the pillars. So if we if we go in the Quran, you go to chapter Qaf, it says Qaf al Quran al Majid. This is verse number one. You know, mm-hmm. if we go, let us uh, try. Let me try to put it in the screen so people they can see with us. Um, <clears throat> this is a chapter uh, fifty, verse number one. Okay, I will try to show your video in the same time that the text. It says here, Qaf, Qaf, and the Muslim they say those are letters. It's a miracle in the Quran. One of the miracles of the Quran. <laughs> I mean, how in the world a letter is a miracle? Have you ever heard of a, a crazy? It's a letter. It's a letter. It is just a letter. And this letter is exists before Allah. So what? The, but but when we go to the interpretation, and I will go to the interpretation. Hold on, you will see. How what they call it miracle became a joke. Let us go here. Al Tafsir. All right, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. I will show it in the screen for everybody. Chapter fifty, verse number. Uh, one and this is something you can add to your uh, to, to the list of stupid things in, in Quran Abdullah <laughs> so here you see the Muslims they have they, they don't know really how to explain this but we go to Ibn Abbas the earliest the earliest uh, uh, person who explained Islam is in the cousin of Muhammad it says here from the narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas he said in his interpretation Allah is saying Qaf he says Qaf 
is an azure mountain overlooking this world and the color of the sky takes from it Allah swear by it. do you see it yes so, so what is the pillars we cannot see is this cough so it's mountain. a mountain it's a mountain overlooking the earth from all sides like a fence like a wall you know and then the sky in the top of it and the reason we cannot see it you know because it's a blue to the point even the sky is taking its color from it interesting so i had never heard this before um i don't think anyone uses this tafsir because it's obviously very problematic um but is probably why muslims don't use it what I, what i do know is what we find in the tafsir and now now interestingly the quran is much more vague right but like what you find is in the tafsir that the muslim scholars have come up with all of these different things to explain it and uh, what we find is the older tafsir the ones which are closer to the time of muhammad they have all these funny things in them that kind of you know explain to us that muslims at the time the scholars of the religion you know this is how they made sense of it but at the end of the day it's just one person's opinion right even though they are scholars of the religion um like nobody nowadays would ever would, would even want to show this to anyone because and they would say oh well this tafsir is wrong that's what they would say this guy made a mistake right the yeah, quran but, doesn't uh, say that but it has a root first of all ibn abbas is the only scholar muhammad he named him as a scholar you see mm -hmm. muhammad he prayed that may allah made ibn abbas habrul ummah i don't know if you know what does that mean do you speak Arabic? Uh, no. Okay. No. Hebrew Ummah, which means the scholar of the nation. This, so there's no way Allah, he missed, uh, he did not answer the prophet prayer, right? Yeah. Same so, time, what, like, I will give you an example. You, you know about the story of Alexander the Great, and you mentioned that the Muhammad, he took stories from, you know, from people before him. The story of Alexander the Great, it says that the sun sit in the murky water, correct? Yes. Okay, what the Muslim, they say, in their interpretation, to try to defend, they say, many of them, uh, it is this is the pr perspective of the eyes. This is not really what happened. It's not yes. Allah saying, but if we go in the in the hadith, Muhammad got them busted. So what we would do with Muhammad? Muhammad says that the sun set in the murky water. Yeah. You know? So the, the Muslims they can play that game as long you do not know. The second you know, then they are in trouble. Here we go. This is Muhammad himself explaining the verse. So what we would do now with Muhammad, we will say Muhammad is this is one uh, uh, one man opinion. He's a prophet. He is the one who brought the Quran. It says, yeah. Yeah. I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah, S A W S, <laughs> F M Radio, who <laughs> was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He asked, "Do you know where this set?" I replied, "Allah and His Apostle knows best." He said, "It's set in a spring of war, uh, war, uh, boiling water." So. What the Muslim will say now? They will say this is an opinion of a scholar. They cannot, yeah. and they will say Muhammad he uh, do not know. That I remember. Mean. I remember the looking into this, and um, I also remember that if you look at the hold on, let me share my screen again. Um, this is very interesting. I got this from the video of the Mast Arab, and what he was able to show is that all of the early taf tafasir, like all the way from tafsir mujahid, which is one of the earliest ones, all the way to the 18th tafsir in order of chronology, all of them had the same issue that they thought the sun was actually setting in a murky spring. So um, the, the mast Arab actually went in Arabic from all of the tafasir. And, and this is what the Muslims believed, right? Until... I think number 19, when you start to get some doubts because the science started to catch up with the Muslim Ummah, right? And Ibn, I think maybe by Ibn Kathir or maybe before that, they started to, they knew the sun was too big at this point. So now they're like, okay, we can't, what do we do about this, right? Yeah, but, but you know, even even the scholars who today, they try to defend, you, you see the, the interpretation of the Quran is not meant to explain the Quran, it's meant to mm -hmm. defend. So even yes. the earlier scholar, they were not really explaining as much they are defending. But because yeah. uh, the Muslim at that time, they are superior, you know? So they don't yeah. care if you believe or not. I mean, who care? I mean, we, we, we got you, we, are, we have the sword and you are no one. But yeah. today, the Muslims, because they cannot force you to believe in this, so now they have to, to come to your belief. You don't believe the sunset in murky water, now they are changing, you know? Their belief to make it fit with your belief. They are compromising yeah. their Quran, you know, claiming that Allah did not make a mistake here. It's what you believe is right. The sun does not say in murky water, and the Quran doesn't say that. But the fact the Quran is saying that.
because they admitted in their in, in, in their inner that this is obviously it's an error and you know if you go to the verse you will see the verse saying clearly it's not the guy who saw that Allah is the one who said he he found it right he says yes he found it he found where well, he found it. he did not say he thought it is I mean Arabic is so clear it says yeah. he found it he's he and the, the 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 second you say he found that is reporting a fact right yeah yeah uh, if we go to the verse right now let's see Oh. And you will see the Muslim translation. All of them, they are trying to make it look something. It's not there. They try to give their own false uh, translation. Uh, you will find, even if the Muslim try to defend, still they cannot defend that. Why? Because very simple. It says, until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. Okay, who is the one who's talking? Allah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, until he what? Until he reached the sitting place of the sun. Okay, this is alone is a, is a big mistake. Yeah. Forget about the sun sitting in murky water. Where, until he reached, we can we reach the sun sitting in a place and everywhere. You can in your window right now in my window we yeah. can see the sunset. I do not need to go anywhere. So what yeah. do you mean until he reached. So here you notice the problem right away and how they can cover that. So the Muslim they focus in defending about finding the sun sitting in murky water because this is obvious. So stupid. But the mm -hmm. fact that the story getting bigger before that where he says until he woke it says in verse number in the, in the verse before it verse number 85 so he followed another way he changed direction this is about physical movement and then he says until when he reached the sitting place of the sun he found it sitting in a spring of muddy water okay so who is the one until now is talking it is allah not the guy yeah i i agree with you and i actually have a question for you Sure. Because um, because I'm an atheist and I actually found that like all of the holy books seem to have the same problem. Like for example, um, like if you look at the Bible in Genesis one one two, okay. um, it says that there was water in the beginning. How do you how do you understand Actually, that? Even this is proven to be scientifically, and you don't need to believe in, in what I say. You can search it. When okay. when the earth was created, even according to science, the whole earth was covered by water. And by time, the earth, the ground was appearing in the top. So when God, he created the, the whole earth, the whole earth was covered by water. Actually, until now, the earth is uh, less than 30% of 70% water, mm -hmm. right? So even science proved that, and this is, you know, uh, uh, you know, for me, I saw that many articles speaking about it, and you can search, don't have to take my word for granted, you know, mm -hmm. use your brain. Okay. As we, are, we encourage always people to, to uh, same time, you know, uh, you see, when the Bible speak in the book of Genesis about the creating of the earth, there's no way that God, he is talking about how really he created the earth, I mean, in details. Because if, you know, you are an engineer, right? Software engineer? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, software, yeah, I'm All in right. software, yeah. So if you want to do, uh, if you want to read a, a JavaScript, how many books yeah. do you need to study? Um... Well, nowadays uh, you go online because the things I know, but changing I mean, it's, so much. It's it's big, right? It's not a yeah. You can't yeah. put it. You can't put it in five hundred pages, right? Yeah, and it's just the JavaScript. It's not a big deal. So, what about God? He want to give us a book to explain how He created the whole world. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to explain to us how He made the eye, He need to give us maybe fifty books. Just the eye, yeah. you know. So the the Bible is not really giving us details about how God He created. It's the simple details for the man. Who have a simple understanding, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is not really uh, a details of a creation as much it is in a simple way. Okay. So is it is it any anything in the Bible that shows it's it's actually from God, like something greater than what the people back then would have known, like prophecies, something like that? Well, you know, uh, like for us, first of all, the, the Bible is not meant to be a, a book of science. Mm -hmm. no. It is. It is. You know. As an example, if I say to you right now, and you are an atheist, uh, well, Jesus was a son of a virgin. That's that's funny. Yeah. You know that, that that's not science. Yeah. Okay. This is not have nothing to do with science. This is what we call a miracle. Yes. Okay. So when you speak about science, it's not the Christians who try to make the book of God a book of science. A book of belief mm -hmm. is different from book of science.
Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I can explain science in a different way. As an example, you know, for me, uh, as, a, as a believer, uh, once I was sitting with an, an atheist, actually, he come to a church, and after the church, every time he make fun of them, like, mm-hmm. and he said, he's, he's, a, he's an eye doctor. Actually, they asked me just to come and maybe I can do something with this guy who they don't know uh, what to answer him. So, okay. Uh, he said to them, you guys, you want to, you are funny. You want to convince me that uh, Jesus, he put some sand on the eye of somebody and he made him see. Yeah. Supposedly, that's the blind man, right? Mm-hmm. And I said to him, what do you do, sir? What do you do for a living? He said, I'm an eye doctor. Mm-hmm. I said, Isn't mm-hmm. it you who put sand every day on the eyes of people to make them see better? He said, what? Uh, he said, don't you every day yeah. put sands on the eyes of people to make them see better? Uh-huh. He said, uh, but this is different. I said, no. If I come to you 2,000 years ago and I say I will bring you something made of sand, put it in mm-hmm. your eyes and you will see different, you will laugh at me. Yeah. Because you don't understand. You're talking about glasses, right? The glasses is made of sand. Yeah. Simply it's made yeah. of sand. So yeah. because you don't understand something is beyond your, your understanding right now, th- that is for you is funny or is stupid, you know? Mm-hmm. But in fact, it can be happened. But all the point is, I do not know about it. I never saw it, so I don't believe it. Same as if I say to Abdullah, uh, maybe if we are born in the 12th century, I told you there is one day somebody will speak to you in China and you can hear him in mm-hmm. America. Right away you will say to me, you are crazy. Yeah. You know, they, they will put me in the hospital of crazy people. And <laughs> nobody will believe yeah. me and they will laugh at me. So yeah. science is not really science as much as like, uh, 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 it, it's, not, it's not fake because it's fake. It's fake because we don't believe. And same as mm-hmm. believe, which means it's not necessarily can be fake, but because you don't believe in that, you decide to make it fake. So if I say to you, there is something that's called wave, radio wave. Yeah. A thousand years ago, you will make fun of me, but even though it's true. Yeah. Because it's beyond the imagination and this, there's no way I can understand. This is stupid. I mean, what, do you, what, do you, what are you talking about? What so, if I say to you, I will, make, I will speak in my TV right now and uh, mm-hmm. I will speak in China and you can see my image in USA. You, this guy is crazy. You know, take him out of <laughs> here. You know? so, but today is accepted because we saw it. We believe it. Right. So do, do you say the same about the Bible, that it's something we can never understand no, fully? No, it's not about we can n- never, it's about we experience. When you experience, you believe it. Okay. Okay. This is what, uh, even what science is. Science is about experience things, and yeah. then you believe it. So for me as a Christian, when I experience the belief, then the ex- the, which means I, I, the, first, the first thing you do, uh, you have a belief. And where mm-hmm. does the belief come from? Because you became a, a confident in something. How you became confident in something? I see things around me, which is really proving to me that uh, there's a truth there. I mean, mm-hmm. until now, there's tons of miracles, and for sure, a person who's an atheist, he will not believe in them. But they yeah. happen, and I witness them, and they, they happen, and nobody can explain. Even today, you go to a doctor who's a scientist, and there's a guy that say he have a cancer. Uh huh. Forget about God. And then he says to you how he was, he was recovered. It's a miracle. Even doctors, they use that term. Yeah, miracle. miracle. When they use that term, only when they cannot explain how. Yeah. You know, why? We don't know. It's a miracle. So God is beyond our comprehend. So we call him. He himself is a miracle. So don't Muslims say the same thing? They say that, yeah, but, you know, I, I did Rukya and it was, you know, he became healed and it's a miracle, and the doctors can't explain it. No, you know, you people say they read Quran, and yeah. everything changed we, we, in their life. Like even Hindus sometimes will say that they went to the doctor, and you know, he, he couldn't help. But then they went to the spiritual, the shaman, and he did something, and he blew on them, and then they became better. And they say you can't explain it through science. See, Jesus said, "Believe in a stone, you will recover." Which means belief is very helpful, and even science proved that. All right. So when you are a person who believe, even if you believe in a stone, which is f- it's false, it's, yeah, it's fake. All right. Yeah, yeah. But if that stone became a belief for you, your belief will help you. But that's okay? called placebo effect, right? That's like no problem. When you think you're but taking the, a pill, so time, so when they do a scientific yeah, study, they the always give Jesus, you a placebo. 
Yeah, but because case, that the effect on you, you think is going to help you, but like obviously, a placebo cannot cure cancer. It might make you feel better. No, 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 no. But, no, no. Actually, even science. Let me tell you. According yeah. to science, a person who don't want to fight death, he will die. Say that again. A what person do who don't want to fight death, he will die. Yeah. If he want to yeah. die, he die. That's it. You know. Yeah. Like I, I will tell you a story, which maybe is is funny. We have a we have a. a I was in high school, all right. And there's a guy he wanna go with us in. Uh, uh, like we are, we are going like a trip, a school trip. But he is very boring, annoying, and he is like stuck like a glue on us. <laughs> so they told me we don't want him to go. And I said, okay, well, let us uh, practice some Islamic method. They said, what? They said, let us pra practice taqiyya. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what is that? He said, when he come, every one of you see him alone. Say to him, why your face is yellow? Why you look like that? What's look at your eyes? The guy, he came, he's fine. And then the first guy, he said to him, why your face is like this? And you know, we are kids. We are just like not adult. I mean, this is a kid, you know. So yeah, uh, uh, man, what's happened to your face? What? Why your eyes look red? And you know, you are you okay? And the guy he start. I know, I feel fine. You know, and they start. And then the first one spoke to him. The second time, the the, first, the third, the fourth, and then after after nine, ten people, they spoke to him. He went to the director. He asked for a, yeah. a, a, a sickness, a, a yeah. illness. Uh, you know, he because he decided to believe he's sick, so he's he's getting sick. And then after. Is it Three four days he did not come to to school. He get sick for yeah. real. You know, we went there. He have a fever. You know, he yeah. he, he made that's, himself believe he's is sick. All right. That's that's his form of uh, bullying, right? Because you're you're inflicting psychological abuse on right. someone. Yeah, right. But is, isn't that isn't that also how religion works? When everyone around you says, "Yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe," and then you also say, "Well, everybody else believes, I must be wrong, and and I should believe too." No, no. Without see, any evidence. What here? What we are? What we are? We are doing. I just showed you yeah. an example. If you convince yourself. Yeah. You know, not only because I cannot convince you, unless you convince yourself. If you convince yourself in something, you will be that thing. All right. Now, in the case of in the case of Christianity, yes. If I want to convince myself that Jesus is God, still I have to put my God into test, and that test okay. is: Do he match with the words he say? Uh huh. It's not just I say th something and then I go with that and I believe it blindly. As an example, you said that the Muslim they do raqia, which means they read Quran to heal themselves. Yes. Muhammad himself, he was poisoned. Muhammad himself was and the black magic and he yeah. is the one who said if you eat seven ajwa you will yeah. be fine right yeah but that yeah. does not happen to Jesus Jesus he you know he touched that that the, the man he cannot uh, see and he saw uh, mm -hmm. Jesus he told the man he cannot walk walk he walk so, so how do we know this though like how do we know these stories are true and not just made well, up it happened every day and before maybe for you it's hard to believe but there's millions of stories of people they are healed by by by, by God and are healed by but, the, by his name it's not, but it's aren't, not fake. It's aren't not people fake. also healed by shamanism and like, no, like I said? It, it can, you can be helped, as I said, by belief and believing. Yeah. Just having a belief, it gives you strength. Okay. Right? But, but that's still, placebo then, right? But, but still, that's not a miracle. That's okay? not a miracle. That's yeah. not a miracle. We are talking about things is inc inc incredibly, uh, it cannot be explained, you know? Okay. And yeah, yeah. I, you know, if I, if I start quoting for you things, you might say, because he's a Christian, he is, you know, he trying to convince me that it's true, but I advise you to search for miracles where a Christian they witness them for real, and they are real. They are not just a not a not a guy saying something. You will see yeah. a guy he was uh, believing in something, and suddenly he became something else just because he saw uh, a vision, and that vision impacted his life. So, yeah. uh, uh, seeing, knowing, and uh, experiencing is what Christianity is about. It isn't um, I, I hear this a lot from Christians that they saw visions of Jesus. I mean, I remember even when I was a Muslim and I was doing a Dava booth, we had this one lady, she was crying and she came to us and she said Jesus appeared to her in a dream and told her, you know, I can't remember what she said, but but basically she was very, very touched by this personal experience that she had. Um, so, but, but then people also say they saw Muhammad in dreams, right? And then they said, Muhammad told me this and that, and it came true, <laughs> which is like such to me, I'm like, I don't, I don't believe that, but, but they say the same thing about Muhammad. So how do we know like who's right and who's wrong? Like if I'm an atheist, one person says, Jesus appeared to me in a dream. The other person says, Muhammad appeared to me in a dream. And I'm an atheist. I don't know. Like, how do I know who to believe? Um, first of all, somebody appearing for me in a dream, uh, it can be just a dream. I mean, a dream is a dream. It can True. be a vision uh, from something real or it can be uh, just a dream. However, 
we don't believe in Jesus because of a dream. Maybe somebody oh, who okay. does, somebody he does this is his business, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a message for him. Maybe it's true and maybe it's fake. Maybe it is right. Maybe he is imagining. I don't know. But mm -hmm. for me, I don't believe in Jesus because I saw a dream. You know, I saw his wisdom. I saw his amazing teaching. I saw his ability, and I saw his power. Same time, I noticed that everything have the finger print mm. of a creator. You know, like uh, uh, you, you see, like in in science, they say to you, most of animals they have the same kind of same structures, right? Mm -hmm. like, you mean they all come from DNA, right? Like you know, let us say a form of like life. eyes or something. Yeah, but that is because of the same creator, the same engineer. Not mm -hmm. because of uh, the, because simply, if if he is a one person who created all those things, so it's very clear. Like if Picasso, he made a, an image, and it's very normal to see that Picasso he have the same kind of image, but different drawing. But it's still we can know that this is Picasso, an expert. Yeah. know that this is the same artist, the same person, and this is exactly for God. So when we speak about about uh, God in Christianity, uh, we do not need to prove him by science. Because science today can be proven to be wrong tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know. Science, yeah, is not science. Really, they call it fact, but I don't believe in this kind. What's of, called a fact? Like as an example, there's things we can understand. Like if you say the Earth is a flat, yeah. obviously it's wrong, right? Yeah. Because yeah. this is, we do not need to debate about it no more. But yeah. Still, there's a lot of things in science, it is not really proven, you know. Okay. But they call yeah. it science. As an example, they say to you. Uh, the uh, the Big Bang theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a theory actually, but because yeah. they adopted, the majority adopted, they start saying, and then the Muslim they adopt the Big Bang just to make you believe that Islam, in agreement with the Big Bang, but the fact Islam does not agree even with that one. And neither, so, so neither do you not believe in the Big Bang? You don't believe in the Big Bang? Well, the, you see, the Big Bang for me, I find it silly and stupid because it says that something explodes, but there's nothing. <laughs> What do you mean? How there's nothing and there's something explode? It, it's a. It was a point of infinite density where all matter. of the matter okay. and energy but was they, in. But they can in explain a to point. us where's that coming from. Well, it may have always existed. It could have it, been it, eternal it, matter. You see how it can right? be that how this eternal matter exists, but you did not create. To so me, you did not explain so, to me the creation yet because what they created the creation is not explained yet. So what is the science? So so if to go back to the Big Bang. Um, you're right that we don't have an explanation as to where the matter came from, from the Big Bang. But like I wrote this on my blog, which I, I found it very interesting because I only started studying this like after I left Islam. Um, there's three different reasons why the Big Bang is true. One of them is Einstein and his theory of general relativity, which predicted the universe was expanding. So because of Einstein, Einstein actually doubted his own science. Because at that time, everybody believed the universe, like, thing. It didn't, didn't think it was expanding. They thought it was a static universe. So because of this, he's like, no, 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 I must be wrong. My physics is all wrong. And he actually made the biggest, what he called the biggest mistake of his life, which was to add a constant in order to adjust for the expanding universe because he couldn't believe it was expanding. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, that in 1964, two American radio astronomers discovered the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is a leftover from the explosion of the Big Bang. And, and last of all is actually Edward Hubble, who looked in the space and saw that the universe was expanding, right? So based on that, we know that at some point, you know, the universe, if you reverse it, you know, it, the universe is closer together. And now we know, like, the universe is expanding like faster and faster every day so that, you know, we're getting further and further. Like if you look at the star, it's actually moving away, right? So that's why I believe in the Big Bang because I think there's like three different evidences for it. Well, you know, first of all, the, 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 the universe is expanding as written in thousands of years before, before science finds that in the Bible. And yeah. We don't talk about it. The Bible says that, you know. Okay. The Bible, say, the Bible says that uh, God, he scratched the sky the same as a curtain. All right. Uh -huh. If you go to the book of Job, uh, chapter thirty-seven, uh, uh, you will see that is how how he spread the sky, how he, he extend the star sky, same as in the book of Jeremiah. So we don't we don't try to apply science from like we don't try to apply what the Bible says on science. 
But doesn't doesn't the Quran say that too? No, the Quran does like, not say. The Quran what says is this? That, How do you translate Musiun? Musiun, Musiun, that we can do more. This is this is a false uh, 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 statement. Translation. Yes, this is a false translation and false. Uh, uh, it's a lie, simply. So, so I understood that Musiun has two meanings. One that means big, vast. And the other one that means expanding. So Muslims like the one that says expanding now. No, but Muslim like in the past, they used no, to use Muslim the one that meant no, really no. big. No, you see, if you go to the verse, always when you when you uh, when, when you try to understand something, ask yourself why Muslims for centuries, fourteen centuries, they did not make it about what they claim now. Why do they suddenly became something else? Yeah. All 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 the scholars before Islam, before the Muslims, they did not understand the Arabic very well. <laughs> you know, totally now the, they, they, they understand better. So yeah. th this is the question we need to ask ourselves because this is obviously proving that they, this is kind of uh, uh, a lie. They, yeah. they, they fabricate, you know, they, yeah. fabri they fabricate the meaning, they change the meaning. Uh, and if you if you go to chapter 2, verse number 236, it says, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a meaning for, for the word where it's... Uh, Make it bigger, all right? Mm -hmm. yep. But but what when you go to read the interpretation, you will find that this is mean that Allah, He is going to even build more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about Sorry. scratching. Which, which which one was that again? Sorry. This is this is a chapter. You can go chapter fifty one, verse number uh, forty seven, and we can go right now to the interpretation. 51, 47. 51, 47. Okay, yeah, uh, so that's we, the one I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, if you go to the interpretation, you will see the Muslims don't agree with the what I mean. The scholars don't agree with the Muslims' uh, fabrication these days. You know, okay. yeah. So, uh, this is uh, Ibn Abbas in English, and always remember, the English translation is a little bit different from the Arabic one. It's kind of you know funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, read with me carefully. He has become capable and strong so the word more Allah saying I am capable even of more as simple okay. as that I have nothing to do with the scratching the heaven or oh, sorry uh, expanding the heaven and and the uh, and, uh, <laughs> and the earth uh, and you notice that the Christians they don't like if you go to in the book of Isaiah yeah in the book of Isaiah let me see if I can get you the verse from uh, from the Bible to the screen so people can read with me Tell me the 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 this one is, as well, so I can look up. This is, I, book, I can't. this is this is the book of Isaiah in the screen. Isaiah, Isaiah, right? Chapter uh -huh. forty, uh, verse number twenty-two. Okay. Okay. It says that it is he that he sits upon the circle of the earth. The earth is a circle. The strange translation, by the way, it's not. A, yeah. Yeah. And then he said, and the inhabitants therefore are. Uh, as a grass uh, uh, hopper, yeah, and that is stretched out the heaven as curtain, and he spread them out as a tent in the well end. I mean, this is a book written thousands of years before scientists discovered that the earth is is a is a is not flat. You know. So so oh. doesn't that like a circle could still be flat though, like a coin, right? No, circle is not. No, circle is like like actually, a globe actually, or actually, a ball would be not flat. But cir a circle is flat, right? Circle, circle. No, circle is uh, is the shape. Is not really. You see, when you say a circle, are you talking about one circle? I don't know. Or it is a circle, all of it. So it is all of it circle. So when we we apply that the Earth, all of it is a circle. That's mean all of it is a circle, not only the side of it. When you say a circle, in the way you but are that's saying, but that's not that's not circle, then that's globe or that's actually, ball. This is ball is here. ball actually, is different from circle, actually, right? There is better uh, in, in, uh, like uh, translation. It's not even a globe. It is uh, uh, like uh, so. So, do they have tafsir for the for the Bible yes, too? Yes, for sure. But you will find that this is this is just a translation. Translation okay. here use the word circle. Remember, we are not reading the original thing, but. Uh, 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 the the, the uh, and you can go and read the interpretation for the Bible, which is really exist from the beginning, not today. I mean, nothing changed. So this is how the earth looked like, and then it says there that he stretches the heaven as a curtain, and this is exactly what you are talking about as the, the Big Bang, right? 
That uh, is, yeah. Okay, but we we don't make science of this. We don't make you don't see Christians making bragging about look what the Bible says, right? Yeah. And maybe this is the first time you well, hear this. Yeah. So we don't talk about it because we are not going to prove God because somebody he says there's a big bang. Uh huh. That is silly for me. Because uh, the big bang, first of all, is not not to be proven. If somebody says there was something a power and then do you do you believe in Einstein like Einstein equals MC squared which friend, is the foundation I, of okay, all of Einstein, like science today okay Einstein Newton they, they have <laughs> many, many, many theory and later they found that even their theory cannot be uh, not all, all of it is correct as an example since you are a child you heard that the apple fell down from the tree yeah and okay because the apple fell from the tree that's mean the big mass would have grabbed the small mass correct Yes, but later they discover that is not true always. Yeah, if the mass became so small, the big mass have no impact on it. You're talking about quantum mechanics now. I'm not sure about the name. Excuse me, like my English is not really that. Uh, it's not my first language to say okay. the term for you in English. But if it is so small, then the so small is free. To the point, the big mass don't con don't control it. Like there is a dust flying in the space, and yet they are not controlled by a planet. They are, they are not grabbed by the planet. They are not grabbed by a star. They are not grabbed so, by anything. But when humans go on the moon, like we have, we, there's less gravity and we fly, like we jump up and down and we can jump much higher. Yeah, but the human so, is, not, is not that small. We're talking about so small. And yeah. Because you are so small, then the, the control of the gravity is gone. But we, we can also simulate zero gravity by dropping a plane. Have you seen these planes? They drop it at the same exact speed as gravity and you can float in the, in the, in the not, in the play airplane yeah, so it's I like you can experience zero gravity because gravity is 9.8 9 meters per second per second so if you drop at exactly the same speed as 9.8 meters per second per second it cancels out gravity and you can fly like just like you're in space right but i'm, I'm saying that according to scientists this is not my statement i don't know even okay. what they are saying i am not a scientist i did not go to the lab with them they were saying and i saw it and you can search for it that they found that Newton, I think it was a Newton they are talking about. Yes. That, yeah. that his theory, it was accurate for a long time, but the, 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 okay. lately they discover that yeah. not all of it is accurate. I, I know what you're talking about. You're, yeah. Newton, Newtonian mechanics are true at the size of large objects, but when you get into the very, very, very so, tiny objects, yeah. so at the quantum level, then things don't behave the way we expect them to do. Right. So particles pop in and out of existence, a particle can be described as being in all places at once, like like crazy, mind blowing things that that nobody expected, right? So quantum mechanics is 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 very difficult. And someone once said that if you think you understand quantum mechanics, that means you don't understand it. So so yes, at the very small level, Newtonian physics break down, yeah. but that is correct actually. See, but but, but we but we never throw out um, Newtonian physics because Newtonian physics is still correct for for like large size objects. So like for example, for me, if I drop a ball. Or if I drop a you know anything, we know it's going to drop at nine point eight meters per second per second because, like, this is at the size of things that matter to us. But quantum, we're talking about like microscopic particles, right? Like very, very, very tiny article particles. Yeah, but you know, remember, uh, for a century, like I mean, for all the time since Newton he came with this theory, we yes. we take for granted. We don't talk about the small one. We granted or the or, or the everything functioning in the same way, but now they discover that there's an exception. Yes. Right? So yes, even what it's called like we know for it or we, we are sure from it even that can be an exception and i believe too yes that if we change locations it can be uh, there's the exception will happen you know we understand what it's called physic based on the physic yeah. we have but maybe yeah. in different area the physic is different yeah you know if we do go different galaxy maybe maybe the, the 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 nature law is different you know we are we are judging about experience remember science is an experiencing thing mm -hmm. not about really uh, like come with something it's already there but we just discover it right yeah but, but maybe tomorrow we'll discover something else might contradict something we have for centuries people they, they uh, who, those who they call themselves scientists they thought the earth is a flat and yet they are scientists mm -hmm. you know yes they are, they are the philosopher of their time they are the scientists they are the the wise men and yet later we find that they are not uh, accurate so what can be accurate today, it might be wrong tomorrow. But things do stabilize, right? Like, so example, like gravity, for example, 
we know that it's unlikely that that will change the that that understanding is unlikely to change and as we as humanity progress we build upon like what past nations and past people have built like as someone said we're standing on the shoulders of giants like we're basically building on like what people before us figured out right basically no friend let me tell you i don't you know, the science for me is not a science science for me is finding out things around us they call it yes, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. They, they call it science, but I don't believe in it. Because finding things around us is not really science. Science should be for something different. It should be uh, me able to do something uh, with what I found out. And this is what it should be called science, not the discovery. That's, that's what it is. Right? Because once you have the theory behind it, then you can build lasers, you yeah, can build GPS now, satellite okay, but, systems. But since they found, since they come with a theory of the Big Bang, what they come, what they can come with it, nothing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nothing. This is what I'm talking about. So yeah. I came back, I came to you and says, hey, this is how the Earth is created, and there's no Big Bang's theory is the same as a Muslim saying to me, Muhammad, he went to the moon. Okay. He have no witnesses. He have no proof. He have a theory. You know, you don't you don't believe people went to the moon. Oh, you said Muhammad no, 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 went to no, the no, moon. No, Muhammad he went to the uh, sky and, and talked oh, to so, so we don't. You see here, I see that sometimes there's a hypocrisy in those who believe in blind science. Okay, uh -huh. either you believe in the Big Bang and you prove it to me, or don't mention yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah. Can you prove it? You cannot. The same as you said to me, prove to me God. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's different though because we have evidence for the Big Bang that is in the form of cosmic background radiation, in the form of no, successful no, no. There's, science there's and no, physics. There is no evidence. You see, I, 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 I watch tons of programs made by scientists, and they keep saying it is just it is a theory. It's not really. There's no evidence, and you 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 notice, uh, like when we speak about the word evidence, I find it funny. Yeah. Because uh, when we say about when we speak about evidence. Okay, now we knew how supposedly the Big Bang happened. Mm -hmm. What about you make a Big Bang? And they did. They created a big machine and they wanted to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. They want to make a Big Bang. It came with yeah. a failure, you know? Yeah. So the idea is it's just a theory unless you can make it happen, right? So, uh, uh, you know, like there's things nobody can explain. And mm -hmm. I know you are an atheist. I'm not trying to make you become a Christian. Stay as you are if you wish. But yeah, let yeah. me tell you, when, when you as an atheist believe, yeah. That everything we have, the, 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 you believe in something is called evolution, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have the smallest, let us say, one day we used to be a sail. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And then yeah. the sail, how the sail in the world will know that now I'm going to split myself and I'm going to tell my other sail, you make a vagina and it's going to take you 10,000 million years and I will make a penis, it's going to take me 10 million years. And then after that we meet. If the purpose of evolution is uh, the needs, and already they are, you know, they are like, uh, uh, let us say, um, they have offspring without sex. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they, the, the cell is splitting itself, correct? So yeah. if there's no need, so okay. In, in one hand they say to you, the need made that happen. The need, mm -hmm. okay, but they do not need it. They do not need to have a penis already they are producing yeah they already are increasing so how how two sales they will talk to each other and say hey you start developing yourself now and i start developing myself now after 10 million years from now <laughs> you became a vagina i become a penis so so the the development of male and female is is actually a fascinating topic uh, and I'm, I don't have a background in science, but I, I did read one book, which I found like, very, very interesting, which is called The Selfish Gene. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something I learned that was very interesting is like what we think of as like male and female, it's, it's much more like, so, so basically at some point in an evolutionary history, it, we specialize where women will have a big egg. So basically the cost of having a baby is much more. And then there's a male that has a small egg, which is basically the sperm, which is like very easy and very cheap to make. They both specialized because it made more sense for one of them to be like the caretaker and the other one to be the, you know, the one providing the sperm. When you look at, for example, salmon, like the fishes, they actually take turns being male and female. So, for example, one day the fish will be the male and the next day it'll be the female. 
And if one of them cheats and, and is, for example, female is male twice because male is the one that makes a baby and then doesn't need to take care of the baby, then what will happen is they will break up and it'll go to another fish. So, so there is actually a lot of, si like there is an explanation that we have for why male and female develop, but it is quite complicated. You, no, you're actually, like, it's not a simple, it's not I, a simple I, I question. Don't, I don't agree with you. There's no explanation because as we said, the, the reason for a male and female that exists is to proceed, to, to, to produce, correct? Yes. Okay, as long as they are producing already for, for millions of years, according to what say, uh, atheists they say, then there's no need for male and female. Already they are producing. They are producing, so, they are producing so, their kind. They are producing already their kind. So what, and how, how, how the sales can draw a design that this penis will look like this and the vagina will look like that. And then it's going to take us 10,000 years or whatever, or millions. You yeah. Know? And then, then we will have a penis and a vagina. It's impossible because to say that as if you are saying there is, there is, there is somebody outsider. He is the one is planning, not insider. A cell is a stupid cell. It cannot yes. come with the plan by itself. Exactly. You know? And yeah. to and to make such a plan, this is this is a genius plan. So so what I what the thing is, I would also give a counter example because um, when you said that, for example, you know God's fingerprint is on the creation, I would like this is a little bit different point than what you're saying about male and female. But just just to this, just let's humor me for a second. Um, what I wanted to share with you is that, um, not this one, hold on. So, so why do we find that there's things in nature which are like very disturbing? Uh, for example, you know, the way that bed bugs basically mate, it's very disturbing. It's like the male, you know, inserts his sperm by method of traumatic insertion, but he stabs the female in the stomach and the sperm travels through her blood into the sperm receptacles and eventually into the ovaries. Like this is a very like horrible way to like make pregnant. And like there's so many examples like this in nature, where, like for example with seals, the males forcibly force themselves on, onto baby cubs and sometimes even crush them to death. Uh, male lions will, will kill all of the previous offspring. And you know, ma like lions are not like, if this was all created by God, like why is it that we find even, even just eating meat, even the fact that lions need to eat, like tear apart and to kill, another living animal just to survive. It's not like they have a choice. It's not like, yeah, I'm just going to have like uh, some grass like the elephants over there. So, so the things in nature, when we look at nature, what we find is it just seems very chaotic, very unordered, and it's very much survival of the fittest, right? Like, wouldn't you agree? Well, you know, if uh, uh, the Bible says to us that God created man, mm -hmm. and he gave him power over all other things. Okay. And the rest simply is a cycle of life to keep the life sustained, which means even the bugs, which you find them disgusting, yes. they exist for a reason. They are not there for decoration or just for uh, no reason. So it's a chain of, uh, of food. And the chain of food that even the bug, which you find disgusting, it's a food for somebody or some. Something. Yeah, but, but if you're a god, would you make like, would you program so much suffering into the world like that? Well, this is like, why would you make a lion have to kill and rip apart another animal? just to survive. I mean, what we find is this makes sense in evolution because there's a great struggle. So what happens is the lions evolve better ways to hunt and the deer evolve better ways to run away. Like they get faster and faster in running away and the lions get smarter and smarter but and, still, and it's a it's constant still, battle but, between but the still two. the lions survive and the deer survive. It, this is what the plan of God, that we will keep the, the earth sustained for the man. It's not made for the animal. The animal is not the purpose. The animal is, exists, for other purpose. So mm. you are focusing in the animal, but you forgot that we as what believe that all the animals are exist for us so we can survive and this earth to stay as it is. So even the bugs, like, you know, if we don't have bees, we will not yeah. have fruits, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, the list goes. So the lion, actually, lions and those beasts, they, 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 uh, they were doing what is called natural uh, uh, natural selection filtering, you know. Oh, okay. Like the weak one will die, and uh, the strong one will survive, and then what will give will will keep uh, more health exists in the ground. But what mm -hmm. about a human? A human they kill each other too. Yeah. So if want to blame God, I can say that God he uh, animals are programmed. Man is not. Mm -hmm. Animals are programmed, which means they I are creatures who they have no choice to be something else. You cannot make a duck a dog. Yeah. You know? Even if you bring two uh, 
if you uh, you know like uh, uh, if you if you make a dog have sex with a donkey you cannot make this the donkey have a <laughs> baby from a dog right no you have to be from the same family they have to be related closely enough they have from the same family like a, yeah. ho a horse and a dog and then they will have a mule and then the mule cannot even have babies so yes so yeah. Uh, and evolution the, explains that. <laughs> you can, you Science. Know, you see, this is not, not this is not evolution explaining. Actually, this is uh -huh. this is this is just a practical exp uh, explanation. It's not really evolution. It's not yeah. evolution. I mean, a donkey and a horse, and obviously because they are not. It's exactly because the same it's because family. the genes have have div diverged yeah. the, enough. It doesn't matter that the this combination. Is it's the same thing we find with humans. That, for example, if I have sex with my cousin and I have a baby, and then a cousin marriage over and over again, like you find in Pakistan. You get genetic deformities because what happens is there's no there's no genetic diversity in the pool. You're just reusing the same thing over and over again, mm. and the same thing with sickle cell anemia. If you if you have like you, what happens is human beings will live in an area with malaria. They tend to evolve a natural immunity to to malaria. But what happens is if both the mom and dad have that gene for the immunity to malaria, the combination is fatal to the child, and he gets sickle cell anemia. So that's another example of how. Like nature, it's so strange that, like you know, the mom and dad are immune from a disease, but then the child becomes sick no, because of is, the, the the connection of the genes is bad. It, this is it has failure, a this sickness. This is the failure of your. Uh, this is the failure of your theory. How is that a failure? Because you just said it did not. It was not successful. What do you mean? Because the child he died. <laughs> it's the the what happens is sometimes. It has catastrophic effects, which is what genetic okay, diseases what are. Genetic so, diseases so, so I, I, are an I example of like, I understand. My like God, he gave us ability to uh -huh. survive. So you call yeah. it evolution, okay? I call it uh, ability to survive. So if I live in a mountain area, my lung will be bigger because there's less oxygen. That is not really, uh, I mean, it's very simple. God, he gave you ability to survive. And how you survive, because he gave you ability. Which what is what, what does that mean? You can adopt, you can adopt atmosphere around you. Uh, yeah, so, no, that's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm not saying that if you go in a mountain, your lungs will get bigger. I'm saying that if you go in a mountain and you live there for many generations, your children that are that are not able to survive in that environment are likely to die, and the ones that you have that are have that enhanced ability, even if it's a tiny tiny advantage they are more likely to survive and without any involvement of any god that gene will be passed on that that strong gene in that environment so in, in an example of malaria it's the specific gene that gives you immunity to malaria that will be passed on because the other kids will die that don't have it right so so the random mutation and the natural selection is how evolution happens mm. well uh, you know uh, what uh, what i i think is the right way to think about it this way mm -hmm. that me a person who is not born in the mountain, if I go yeah. in the mountain, still my body will adopt. And simply, even proven by science, if you go in the mountains, you breathe longer so you can get more oxygen. It's very simple. You do not mm -hmm. need to have bigger, they, they will not be bigger in because you went there for five hours, but they will get bigger as, a, as how much oxygen you inhale, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 God, he gave you ability to survive, and this is have nothing to do with what it's called evolution. You are saying uh, the children, the one who survived, then he will have kids and his kids will yeah. carry, carry. But still, he his DNA is still DNA of his parents anyway. Nothing changed, really. That's no, 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 no. There's two ways that DNA changes. One is it mixes with randomly with the mom and dad, but two is there's also random mutations. So whenever you have like children, like I have five kids. <laughs> so my five kids, they all have a different mix of DNA from myself and my wife. But also, um, there's there's a random mutation which happens sometimes. So so they've tested this with like fruit flies and like with bacteria. I know, but and you still you are not coming with a human. You are not coming with something new. It's the same. It is it's a complex of DNA, and it is it is already for what is exist. Yes. Okay. Not something yeah. new. It's not like a new DNA. So it's just an exi exist. But let us say, uh, it, it's it's a new cocktail. Well, you know? dogs and wolves are actually. Like like dogs are evolved wolves. Well, dog is a wolf anyway. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Dog, no, dogs come from the no, wolf I family. I can't say that. He is a wolf, actually. You know, it's, it's just he is the just friendly a, wolves. Just, friendly yeah, wolves. You know, all dogs are wolf, but you know, we, we we give them names. But yeah, you, you see, at the end of the day, you you decide to believe in what you are saying because you decide to believe in it, and you decide to take one side of the story, which is 
Okay, science, they told me that this is how you evaluate things. Mm -hmm. But, and I found that science evaluate nothing. And I will give an example. Mm -hmm. Until now, science cannot even make you live. Science cannot make you come back to life. Science cannot even help you. They give you a medicine. They tell you there's 1,000 effect will kill you. <laughs> and that is side effects so yeah but but this is yeah. science supposedly right this is science okay but so, like wouldn't you go to the doctor if you get sick like you believe in science obviously, I just get right? sick you last, trust it I, as well i just got sick last week and i did not go because i don't trust them you know you don't go to doctors I don't at go all to doctors i don't i don't I, I don't trust them i don't believe in them i don't believe in medicine because simply go and watch any commercial i wish i can play it for you but they will flag me for copyright Okay. <laughs> they say to you, this medicine, like they say to you, this medicine is amazing. My dad took from it, and then yeah. they start reading for you fast. This medicine can cause heart attack, blood, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But like antibiotics, like that's an example yeah, of friend, medicine but, that's helped humanity, like this tuberculosis. Mean, this, is not, and this is not science. Do you remember what I said to you in the beginning? This that's is, not science. This is not science. This is antibiotics is not science. No, it's well, not, what is it it's then? Not, it exists already. You have it already. But all what they now they they brought it in a big um, uh, amount. They put it inside your your body. It already exists. How how is that not science? That's that's not, the definition of science. No, it's not science. It's not science. It already exists. Antibiotic. You, you did not create science. Did you did you create the antibiotic? No. No, but what what science has done is isolated the. Thank so you very much. Antibiotics so come all from what fungus, we need, right? okay, all what we need, like we have olive oil, and yeah. it was in in it was in an olive, and then we squeeze it, and then yeah. we have a drop of olive, and then we squeeze another one, and then we have two, and then we squeeze another one, and now we have three, and now we and now we have a bottle. That's all. So now. So so science is is a something you practice. We are like a rats for the doctors. <laughs> they give you they give you something. It succeed. We say to you, yeah. the, second, the, the other rat, try yeah. this. It's work with this guy. You know. Yeah. So this is what they call science. But the fact that science always face failure because not all their practice work. Yeah. So it is what we call medicine today is nothing but the practice of hundreds of years of mm -hmm. a previous human being, and then we apply it on others because it worked with this guy, so it should work with this guy, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily, and this guy might die, and that's why we say to him, before you go to the clinic, sign this form because you might die here, you know? Yeah. This is what they say to you, actually. They give you a form when you go to the clinic. Put your name, what disease you have, what the problem you have, and sign, and the sign there says that, uh, that we are not responsible, blah, 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 because simply the doctor, he might kill you by a medicine he give you. And there's tons of people who die by stupid doctors, they give medicine which is dangerous. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, what you call science, I call it a, a, a practice of, uh, uh, let us say, a, a laboratory. You know, we are, we are in the lab, like a rat, for a guy who called himself a doctor, and he apply something on you. It doesn't work. He said to you, let us change the medicine. Let us try this one. Come tomorrow and tell me what happened. He don't even mm -hmm. guarantee what will happen because yeah. simply science is not sure. The science in yeah. this case is not sure. As long as science is not sure, it means there's no science. Mm, I, I disagree with that. Okay, well, I, I, because when you say to me science, science is mean one plus one, we have two. Yeah. You don't say to me what's plus one, but maybe two. The <laughs> second you say maybe, so as long as long we are talking about science, so how come we have science, but the result is not guaranteed? So it's not science. It, well, it's because of the body is a complex set no, of. It's not because uh, it's a complex. It's know. because something you cannot comprehend. It is, and your science is still empty now. Cannot understand the action and reaction, what is really inside. So you try things, and you hope it's going to work. And then if it doesn't work, it's getting there. It's getting no, like we are I, getting nowhere. We are getting nowhere. People are dying, and here we go. You see, diseases they they develop themselves and they became more aggressive. And your science face more failure. And I believe time will come and people will will die by millions from a stupid flu again, the same as used to die before. So science is is uh, is useless. It's not really science is helping us. I can say mechanic, like you are a software engineer. We uh -huh. can say this kind of science, it's, uh, you know, but it's come to, uh, 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 you know, uh, a human being and creation and creature, I find it kind of useless, you know, like now, the maximum they can do, they can do uh, a surgery for your heart to help you uh, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, like to, to get more blood run into your, your, so it's, a, it is, it is, a, a, it, there is some kind of it work, but what we call really science about how things are created, we find that the <coughs> science is facing, um, it's like in a dark tunnel, have, they saw nothing yet. What we but know, like, what we know don't you, now is not even maybe 1% of what is called really science. But if you look at Japan, like people are living longer than ever before. I mean, these guys are living in the hundreds 
And like, if you look at even like, for example, statistics on cancer, like what we find is that cancer continues to drop. Like we are able to actually, we have now antiviral drugs that can keep a person that has HIV alive for the rest of their life. It's gone from a death sentence, HIV, to something that's just you can live with. You just have to take drugs, right, to keep you alive. And the antiviral drugs are not, like we haven't cured HIV, but we're close. We're this close to curing HIV. We haven't cured it yet, but we can keep a person alive with HIV. Cancers that used to kill people, like if you used to find that you had like prostate cancer, breast cancer, you, it was a death sentence. But now there's many cancers that, you know, whether it's like uh, pediatric cancer or whether it's like leukemia or whatever it is, it you can actually survive now. It's gone from like a 60% death to like as 20%. I said, as I said, as this is confirmed what I said to you. They are practicing on us as a rat. And then after but that's good though. No, like no that's problem, good no because problem. I want you see, no I problem. want to I, I if I'm gonna die from cancer, yeah, I want at least my next generation to benefit from the yeah. fact that they tried something on me and maybe it didn't work. But, this but at least really they'll science. know for the next generation they so, have something is, better to try. This is you see, this is something practice. It's the same as an Indian uh, village doctor. He used his he learned from something from his grandfather, but why they, how they learn it? Because simply they practice it and it works. It works, yes, you know. Yes. So yeah. they keep practicing things, trying things. After millions of people they die, a stupid cancer. Cancer is something stupid. Time will come, and people will see how silly it is. The same as Europe die half of it in, because of a flu. Mm half -hmm. of Europe die because of a flu, but the flu is so stupid. So it is <laughs> not the, the the problem is knowing, right? But the yeah. solution is always there. We are not making solution. It is there, but we do yeah. not know the solution. So this is why I say I don't believe in science. I believe. Okay in finding out how to deal with things around us you call it science you can call it whatever you want but this yeah. is not really science it's just finding out after practicing you know if you can't get so what is science then what is science to you what's the definition of science, science? Because somebody, to me that is science you try no. something it fails you you throw it away you try something else it works yes yeah, uh, 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 this is what this is what i call science but people when they say science they take it as a for granted for me i believe in something is called trying that is what called science for them, okay. they don't believe in that. They believe when you say science, it's mean let's take it as a fact. That's it. A scientist yeah. he said. Yeah, that's wrong. You know. Yeah. yeah a scientist yeah. he said, but doesn't mean what he said is true because later he himself he cannot uh, if he gets sick he cannot heal himself. You know. If, <laughs> okay, you are a scientist. A doctor there die. Okay, the <laughs> doctor himself he died by cancer, but he's fighting yeah. cancer. Okay. So uh, until now, the science could not find solutions for very simple thing. Uh, cancer is a simple issue. Shouldn't cancer be. is not a simple no, issue. It's simple. Cancer it's simple is a complicated because issue. Simply, it's a uh, you see, uh, uh, cancer is your body going crazy and the cells are multiplying without thank without you, dying. Thank you. Thank right? you very much. That's because what? Because simply, we don't understand how to control this issue, how to fix it, right? Yeah. So your science uh, facing a failure. So what yeah. do you do? You try to fight. You, you try to fight the cells. You are not changing the the body. You are not fixing the body. You are just fighting the cells who they are going crazy. Right, it's like yeah. it's like you have an impact in a place, and you are trying to fix the damage in that place. But you cannot yeah. really, you cannot change the body. The body is the, is there. You cannot fix anything. So yeah, the yeah, defect, yeah. The, the defect is in that cell. So what we do, we kill them. Yeah, we are not yeah. even we are not even replacing them. We are yeah. just killing them. You know. So this is not really science. I mean, this is just a practice of uh, a, a, a practice we practice over rats, and then we say, okay, this rat survived, so we let us apply it in the human. And this what but that's, that's not really science. That is science. That is. No, this is not. This is something uh, we apply in everything in life. I mean, I make salad. I add some salt. Okay, it's yeah. salty. Next time, I'm not going to add salt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this, I can call this science of uh, of of cooking. You know, like the so. science of cooking is to make salty add salt. Y you see, like, but I mean, yeah. I mean, science, science. The way I understand it is the, different from the way people they understand it. People yeah. take science for granted. I take yeah. nothing for granted. Except my belief, my belief is better for me from the science. Because, mm. You know, in the year two thousand ten, I have allergy. I don't know what happened. I lost my voice. I went to the oh, doctors. Wow. This is in America. Very, you know, I, 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 I like because I lost my voice. I have to go to. I, I never go to hospital. I hate it. So oh, okay. because now I can't talk. You know, I have to go online. People are waiting for me. My voice is gone. So did you try like uh, allergy medication over the counter? But look what happened. 
I went the first doctor, the second doctor, the third doctor. No, nobody asked me what did you eat in the morning. Nobody asked oh. me. And later I found out it's just a stupid coffee. I have allergy from the coffee. I drink coffee oh. and my voice is gone. Wow. Machines, laboratory, they took samples of my blood. They took samples of my throat. Uh, you know, I mean, they did everything. And at the end, but it they was didn't ask stupid, you what you eat. it's a stupid coffee. <laughs> I went oh, home. No. Nobody asked me about the coffee. I went home. That's I terrible. noticed. Yeah, I noticed. I drink coffee. My voice go wrong. Oh, I don't drink coffee. That's... My voice is fine. So I said to myself, let me stop drinking coffee for five days or six days. And bingo. Since then, I don't have a problem. That's it. That's, am so, that's amazing. So here we go, science. You know? I mean, <laughs> not even one doctor asked me, what did you drink? Okay, yesterday your voice was fine. Okay, what, yeah. you, what happened between yesterday and today? Nobody asked me this question to make me like, think about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make sense. You go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, you know. Uh, so it was allergy from, from uh, because I drink too much coffee. Uh, okay. so, so here we go. We have scientists and we have laboratories and big hospitals. And they charge a lot of money and they have degrees. And none of those idiots was able to ask me a question. What did you drink or eat before this happened? Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, yeah. They should definitely but do you that. see what it's called science. It is yeah. just a practice. They practice on me medicine. They give me all kinds of medicine. I yeah. start I, I start getting dizzy. I start the medicine they gave me make me sick. Oh, wow. And that's all the problem. So, and make me yeah. sick. You know, some doctors would ask you like some doctors would do allergy tests or they would do like, um, you know, but allergy I, but test I, is a good thing. My, to my test, friend, right? even even allergy text, uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, like a uh, test. Uh, test is just let us try. Maybe yeah. it is, you know, he's guessing. Okay, yeah. it might it might work. A different person, maybe different story. Maybe you have a cancer, maybe you have a problem, you know. So yeah. they don't know, they try things on you. And those things, they work. They, uh, someone like you call it science. Yeah, For me, I, I call it science, it, yeah. I don't call it science, I call it, like, you know, uh, this is right science. This, you know, he tried things on me. It's like a magician from India. He told <laughs> me, go this, uh, take this powder and put it in the water and say, shoo, 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 shoo. And it, it worked, come back to me and we'll yeah. give you more. It did not work, okay, give me something else. This is exactly yeah. what they are trying But there to. is a difference because with the drugs, they go to a strict process of trial and error. They do use animals to test, right? Which is, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. After all the but, tests, but, Still, we are dying, and those drugs. But are less, you. less than before. I okay, mean, people me, used to. You, have you ever heard of a drugs don't have side effect? Uh, of course, the side effect. But the okay. question is, is the side effect less than the actual symptoms? No, some, That's why you take the drug, right? Sometimes the side effect is more dangerous than the, than the disease itself. <laughs> I mean, uh, Abdullah, listen. I yeah. want you to go after we finish. Honest to God, okay. go to, go to YouTube, search for. Uh, any drug, any, anything, yeah. anything, like for heart, and then you will see the list of side effects will scare the hell of you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, even this, Tylenol has this, a big this drug, side This drug effects. can cause a heart attack, can, uh, yeah. uh, 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 brain bleeding, bra brain damage, uh, uh, lose eyesight, uh, yeah. getting dizzy, uh, uh, internal bleeding, uh, 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 stomach, uh, 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 I mean, I mean, you scare, you give me something because I have a flu, you, wanna, you want me to have a bleeding in the brain? You want to step my flu by bleeding the brain? So yeah. what is the science? It is just something they practice on you. And mm -hmm. most of the science we have today is commercial science. And this, you have yeah. to take that into consideration too. They, so they create medicine not because you need it. Yeah. Even many doctors, they send you, they sell you medicine because company, they ask them to sell it and they will give them percentage. Mm -hmm. So the science today is not really a science to depend in. Otherwise, nobody will die. And nobody will suffer. And uh, science, you know, we, we we go to maintenance shop. We became brand new, and they take us out. And science, thank you very much. We are like a robot machine. But this is not what's happening. People I, die I, every day. I think um, you you are right about a lot of the things you're saying about uh, about medicine specifically, and about doctors, and and how a lot of times they they don't look at the big picture. They don't think about simple questions like what you ate. And someone's asking in the chat, I just want to say, I'm not saying there's no God because of this. Like someone was saying, are you saying because uh, of doctors or something that there's no God? And like what I, I do think is possible, there is a God. So I should, I, we didn't talk about that, but I do believe it is possible that there is a God, but I'm not convinced that any of the religious books are from God. So that's where I stand right now. So I'm an agnostic atheist. I think that if there's a power or force or something, it's possible, but I don't, I'm not convinced and that's why I don't believe in God. You know, for me, I believe in God for a very simple reason. Okay. Uh, because you don't believe, I believe. 
<laughs> what do you mean? I, I will tell you why. Okay. The first thing we learn in the Bible that God He gave Adam a free will, mm -hmm. and He by giving him a free will, it's mean He gave you free will to re reject Him. Mm -hmm. And yet our God, if you want, He can force everybody to believe in Him. It's not a choice. If you want, yeah, yeah. If He is really true, exist, right? Yes. But because our God is loving and merciful, and the first thing He, uh, you know, make me. Uh, 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 take what God he says over what people they think is science first of all I don't see what God says is against science I see okay. that we don't understand what God saying sometime and we think it's contradict science as an example you know when somebody says that uh, as I said to you from the beginning Jesus is born of a virgin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is not scientific correct correct but is it possible no. uh, it's possible okay well uh, uh, if God is God and the idea of God is what is he can do what is not impossible and what is not uh, uh, what what is impossible what is, he makes yeah. it possible right so, that's what a miracle is right yeah that's what a miracle is but yeah. life around us is full of miracles mm -hmm. you know you yourself you said like a fish changes a gender this is a miracle yeah. this is not a this is not a joke you know mm -hmm. this is really a miracle how how in the morning she is a female <laughs> and afternoon she's a male yeah you know so if this is not if the, if this is evolution I, I don't think this is evolution I think this is God amazing power but but, he, but how he, do you say god is merciful if he created hell like according to your belief there's a hell okay actually it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a proof of mercy and I'll, I'll explain it to you a proof of mercy yes. hell uh, you know i come to your house abdullah mm -hmm. and i say to you your house will be set in fire mm -hmm. please come with me and okay. then you say you know what i don't believe that fire is coming and leave me alone I can but, who, again. but who set the fire though? Who, no, no problem. God put no, the no. fire. The fire, okay, it, it, everything have a, everything have an expired date. You as an atheist now, all right? Yeah. You believe yeah. that one day you will become dust. That that's mm -hmm. it, you are gone. So yes. is that fair? You are talking to who then? As an atheist. Talking to who? Is that fair that it, you will go? You, you, you like to stay, right? You like to stay alive yeah, forever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now you notice that there's things is out of your hand, even you as an atheist, you have no control of it. And you cannot question why. I mean, why I have an age? Why I'm mm -hmm. aging? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. As long as long I am a person who is uh, believing in evolution. What about my body evolute himself to be living forever? I mean, but the on. difference is, I don't believe that there's someone that has power that controls the entire existence from beginning to end and could actually change it. Like I believe I'm a I'm a product of uh, of the situation that exists, which is a material universe that has no God behind it, right? Okay. So that's the difference. Where you believe in God, and your God actually created the fire and put the house on fire and said, either you come out the house or you're going to burn in fire. Okay. Well, How's that merciful? Well, this is uh, uh, I understand that you are saying here like uh, how in the world this is merciful, and you are giving yeah. me one of two options: either you yeah. come with me, yeah. or you don't come with me. Yeah. Well, why it should be three because if he is the one who created you and then you say to him no I mean look at this you see you are you are you are asking someone who mm -hmm. not only he in control of your life he <coughs> is the mm -hmm. one who created you mm -hmm. and you are saying to him who are you to send me to hell and who are you to force me to go to heaven or to hell I want a third option then he says to you create one for you here we go let your science create the third option mm -hmm. Jimmy, to live forever? Yeah, uh, make the third. It might happen. Make, it might okay, happen. People are go. doing ev when, when research happen, on that. Me, when this happened, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> There's even people who pay money to be frozen so that one day, if science ever figures out how to dethaw them, it's called cryogenics, yeah. they will de unfreeze themselves. Now, I don't know if that'll ever happen, and maybe it won't, maybe it will, but like scientists are trying to cure death as we speak because you know jellyfish can live forever look up immortal jellyfish just google immortal jellyfish there's there's animals that can live forever they, now how uh, can they do that no, we they, need to learn that they right don't, they don't do we want to live forever no, that's a different ethical there's, question there's, there's i think altogether live, there's nothing live forever that's not true but, there's nothing but anyways but but that that aside i again i can't i can't square a merciful god with hell because god doesn't need a hell he could just say that you know, you don't want to believe, you don't believe, you want to believe, you believe. It's your choice. But the punishment is just, you just stop existing, for example. Or, or there doesn't need to be a punishment for belief or not belief. Like, why is that so important to God that he wants to torture us in hell forever and ever? Like, you're talking about four-fifths of humanity. So 80% of the world's population is going to burn in hell, according to you and according to Muslims. Okay, well, God, again, God it, he gave life. Yeah. He, he gave you life. This was the idea. 
God, he gave you life. He had the right to take it off. He gave it to you. You know, this, so, is, what, this is what we believe in. So you, are, you don't own your life. And you are, you are talking about your life as if you own it. So we can't question it then. That's what you're saying. No, you no, can't you, question you, the you, fact you, that because you, God you, made okay, us. Okay, well, uh, let so, me ask you. Can you, uh, can you delete yourself? Mm -mm. You cannot. Okay, so can you question instead? Still now, you as an atheist, you can question why you came to life, right? So here we go. You cannot do anything about it. You are here. Yeah. Can you reverse? You cannot. So you as an atheist with your science cannot still do find a solution for what we're talking about. So the idea is very simple. The one who created, he have the control of his creation. Mm -hmm. And he gave you an opportunity to believe or not to believe. Mm -hmm. Then you want to blame him for not believing. You want to blame him with what you are doing right now. I mm -hmm. blame you for torturing me because I don't believe. Well, he told mm -hmm. you. This is what will happen. He told you, there's fire. He said, I don't care. He said to him, you, you, you will go to fire. You will be burned there. I don't care. I want to be an atheist. Then you insist. So you accepted the punishment before the punishment. But you, doesn't that mean that, like, for example, gullible people, people that are willing to believe in things without evidence are more likely to be saved and people that are more skeptical are less likely to be saved? Like, isn't that... Doesn't you're that saying, seem unfair saying, to you? Be, uh, like I, I, like I can't choose whether I believe or not. I just don't believe. I just don't think this is true. No, no. You so do choose. I deserve to be burned alive no, because I, I don't think that God exists? No, Abdullah. I think you, you see, you said I cannot choose. That's not true. Yeah. You are using, you are debating me for the last maybe an hour and a half about, <laughs> about science, and you said to me, I cannot choose. No, you did choose. You did choose. It's your choice. So no, you can't choose what to believe. Can you believe that Allah is real? Let me tell you that. Can you believe right now that Allah is real? If I, I told I, you that, I, if I if I say about Allah, I will find. I will find if He is God. I mean, that would yeah. be the most silly, stupid God ever. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't change your position because you just either you're convinced or you're not convinced. Okay. There's no choice in the no issue, problem. right? No problem. Let us say. Let us say for sake of argument, Allah is uh -huh. real. I have to okay. pay the price for my belief at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. If He is real, then oh, oops. You know, it's my fault. I <laughs> Oops, him. I'm going to hell. Yeah, obviously, I, because I choose to refuse him. I mean, he is right. If, yeah. if he is real, you know, <laughs> it, 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 as I said to you, it's the same as a firefighter. He comes to your house and yeah. he's wearing a uniform. And he says to you, I am a firefighter. There's a gas explosion will happen in your house. Please come out. Yeah. You say to him, I smell nothing. I see nothing. That's what I say. Yeah. They do. I smell nothing. I see nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fire come. And then yeah. you say, oh, he is the one who set the fire. But he told you he, the fire coming. Regardless who is going to set the fire, he told you, get out. You don't want to yeah. get out. So, so the firefighter is Jesus here, and God is the one who set the fire. The, uh, the fires exist already. It's not the fire somebody, doesn't exist. Somebody made it. No, no, no. The fire, no, he created the fire. It already exists. Exactly. He created, he created, created the fire. Exists, and he created you too. So he created, he created all, me and the fire. And he <laughs> created all the element. And the element, they function together. Okay. Everyone, he goes where he belongs. You mm -hmm. know? Like... You know, always I say to people, listen to me, a fly go to the garbage, a bee go to the flowers. Mm -hmm. So I have to decide where I want to go. Yeah. Either I want to be a fly or I want to be a bee. This is, this is, this is the, the, the belief in, in, in religion or let us say salvation. So mm -hmm. if I know, that, uh, if somebody told me, I, I, I decide not to believe, then don't blame him later and say, yeah. okay, I'm going to question God. How do you do that? Because first of all, you cannot. Secondly, you cannot change it. And science will never fix any problem. And I believe the reason of humanity to be end is science. It's not God. Say, say that again, Sai. The reason for humanity to end is going to be science. Because, because I, believe, I, be, I believe that the more people they get into believing in science, the more that judgment they will come. However, for you as an atheist, I can explain it to you in a different way. Because you don't believe okay. in God. Science will destroy mankind. What? Science is going to be the one who will destroy mankind. For me, from a belief that judgment day is that. For you, as an atheist, let us say it's a nuclear war. Science okay. will destroy everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Because a human being either be, uh, uh, possessed with, by, by believing <coughs> in science and he forget about mm -hmm. how he is made, and then judgment day will come. Or is, if you're an atheist, then you have to believe that science became so powerful in using mechanism of what we have, as we said, by practice, and then became using their evil to destroy mm -hmm. this earth. That's possible. That's very possible that human beings will destroy so, the earth. Yeah, so, it's possible. So, yeah. so people who believe in yeah. loving your enemy as people of Jesus, 
they can use science for better use a person who have no belief or he believe in Allah he can use science in an evil way because he's out of control you know the Muslim he believe I'll have to fight do jihad Mm -hmm. An atheist, he don't believe anything except purpose of life, which is to be successful. Me, my nation, my people, mm -hmm. and the rest forget about them. You know, the same as the communists they do. You know, uh, well, some, well, every, well, there's, there's a lot of differences in, like, like I'm a secular humanist. Like that's my religion. My religion is humanity. So I would never, I would never, you know, support nuclear war or anything like that. And I do think that, like, I, I hope that it never happens. But I do think the fact that <clears throat> it would be like mutually assured destruction that that is what's stopping like different nations from you know getting into nuclear war because they know if they fire the missile they'll be fired back and everyone will be dead right so I do hope and pray well not pray I don't believe in God I don't mean literally pray. <laughs> here we go <laughs> <laughs> but so I guys, do hope and pray we, that we you made know, him that say happens. pray did you hear it here we go <laughs> <laughs> I pray to the spaghetti monster my uh, imaginary God right. okay well no you see even if there's no war happened a human yeah. being is working for his death not his, his science is not going to help him because you remember when it would happen in the uh, nuclear facility for uh, electricity in Japan hmm? Japan Sorry? Japan yeah. was terrified you know how, how much they Hiroshima no not Hiroshima this has happened two years ago there's the tsunami Tsunami oh, hit, uh, you're talking about the the nuclear the the, the leak, the meltdown. Yeah, that yeah, it's about. just a leak. It's just a stupid leak. So imagine yes, yes, the leak, yes, yes. The rain arrived to Canada and USA. You know? Yes, yes, yes. The rain yes. radiation. So imagine if just a stupid leak scared the hell of the whole world. <laughs> happen in Japan, not in here. How far Japan yeah. is? So yeah. imagine if explosion happened in that place, not a leak. Okay? Yeah. So the 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 science. I, the way I see it is something disgusting more than it is something human, because uh, because a human became a human, a human became like a bug. You, you remember you told me about the the the, the, the bed bug how yeah, disgusting yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. A human became like the bed bug. He want to suck everything. He want to suck the energy. He wanna but suck the but if it wasn't for science, we wouldn't have six billion people alive today. We wouldn't have like the farming. Well, it's better. We to, have uh, better the people they not uh, live and die normally, mm -hmm. as they are you always. Better than having six billions and then we kill them over one night. Yeah, yeah and, assuming and, that and that might never will, happen. And though. they will die in a very evil. It's going to happen. You will see. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. You know, actually, most of cancer. So happens, negative. <laughs> you see, cancers happen today because of we are staying away from God. We became too much into oh, material. No, yes, come yes. on. Uh, okay, okay. You heard of a Chernobyl, right? Yes. Okay. Chernobyl killed more than a million Russian. And the Soviet Union, they hide it. Yeah, they said only ten thousand. The right? nuclear disaster you're yes. talking about, the uh, radiation spill, right? Do you think Chernobyl stayed in Chernobyl? It's no. all over the earth. Yeah. Okay. The, the the rain, the cloud, the water is all over. So they say to you, uh, if you if you make a study about how the cancer is increasing, you will find that there is there is a huge increase in cancer suddenly. It's not decreasing as you said. It's yeah. It's increasing. Why? Because a human he is abusing what it's called science mm -hmm. so the science is not really helping us even we are fighting uh, uh, I mean even medicine is involved radiation today you know uh, and everything we now we are you know your cell phone is involved in radiation so the more you are obsessed with science and in need in science you became a slave of it and one day this science will kill you <laughs> I mean it's a very gloomy uh, perspective I, I'm, I'm actually much more optimistic than that. I do think that um, it's quite possible that science will, in, in a sense, allow us to do things that we never imagined. For example, um, like 3D printers now are, are being used to like, you know, like to rebuild organs for people. Like, like they've come, they're doing stem cell research that, that's able to cure burn victims like never before. Like you can spray it on you and your skin will grow back. We're talking about like science being able to like like you know they're doing research on tiny machines that can go inside your body and clean out the fat and you know things that like people would have see, actually I'm not saying all science is negative. Suffered. I'm not saying all well, what you call is negative. Yeah, this is this yeah. is this is kind of uh, uh, engineering more than a science engineering of a technique. I, I see them the same way. I, I I think they go together. Yeah, but it's an it's an engineering. It's about understanding something and how we can fix this issue. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's still the major science is not helping us. Mm. It is it is negative. 
the, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you can look around you. I mean, what what science is doing to our life, even socially is destroying our life. Uh, uh, even mentally is destroying our life. Human being is uh, is losing his mind because it's called something is called drugs, and drugs simply they are using science to generate false drugs to make you go high and millions of people are dying because of that so science have two sides there's a positive there's negative absolutely and absolutely the, the positive the positive i find it uh, let us say is helping the rich ones <laughs> that's true as well you know <laughs> that but, is very true and that's a problem with capitalism in general right like the rich get like viagra and lipitor and the poor people, they're like still dying from malaria because nobody wants to spend money on well, drugs to help the third still, world, right? In communist countries, still everybody die. Not only there's no <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah, still, but, I agree with that but too. You see, yeah, it's, it, you see, at the end of the day, uh, the science is very selective and elective, as you wish. The same as religion, when yeah. you want your, you know, what this is what people want. As you said, you want God. Why God? Do you want to send me to hell? So I want to be elective here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can believe in him, but if you don't believe, if you don't, I mean, why you make hell? I mean, that's not right. Okay, so here you are being elective or selective in what God can be for you. You are trying to uh -huh. design your own God. You uh -huh. you decide to switch from this God to different God. It's called maybe science. Yeah. You know? uh, somebody he believe in mathematics. Uh -huh. uh, somebody he believe there's God, but he called it supernatural. You know. Uh -huh. So everyone he tried to find a solution for a belief, and he resembled God in his own way. And some they believe in himself, which means he became God himself. He is the center of the world. For me, I find that the most healthy belief, regardless if you believe in it, it's true as, or not, as, as an atheist, the most healthy belief for mankind is a Christianity. Love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Help everybody. I mean, love any, your enemy. You cannot find any philosopher in the world who will say such a thing. So, so do you love it's, Muhammad? It's extreme. Uh, Muhammad for me is a is a you know. You see, I cannot say I love him because <laughs> no, no. Let me let me explain to you why. You okay. see, love your enemy does not mean I am in love with a person. He is my enemy. It means I am a person who is obligated to help that person to be saved. It's not so you love that, Muslims then? Not, Would you sure say I love Muslims? Why I want to hate them? I spend hours and days of my life just to save them. You know. Not because I hate them, absolutely not. So I love them to save them, not to give them hugs. Mm, you see, okay. loving somebody is not about. Imagine you have you have a poor guy who's dying from hunger and say, "I love you." I give him a sandwich. You know. Yeah. The, the, well, you don't want your love now. I mean, if you love him, really help him. So if you love a person, you help him. So for us as a Christians, you can be whoever you are. You can stay as an atheist, and I find that the most healthy society is a true believing in Jesus the Christ where everybody can guarantee to himself peace and love assistant and even equality you see you just talk about rich and poor if everybody practice what Jesus did nobody will be poor if somebody asks you a step walk with him 1000 if somebody asks you for your coat give him your dress mm -hmm. imagine so here you see if if we think about each other we can do what science cannot do mm -hmm. you know uh, but medicine companies are not exist to do charities as exist to make money profit of you from your blood yeah you know mm -hmm. and they make their their medicine is extremely expensive to the point you die before you have it and actually you work hard to pay for it and then you die faster so uh -huh. or a doctor you know you go there he charges you uh, uh, you come back home you have a high blood pressure and you find the bill at three thousand dollars then you die you know <laughs> if not because of the bill or or his wrong medicine because of uh, you know the, the the money you will pay <clears throat> so uh, so Christianity solve a lot of problems for for a human being, and mm -hmm. I'm talking to you as an atheist, not for me as a believer. As an atheist, for you, I say that it's a million time better for you as an atheist. If the whole mm -hmm. world became a Christian, from the whole world became an atheist or Muslims. Well, didn't Christians for the longest time burn witches and uh, you know block like for example Galileo me, and me, Bruno me, were no, blocked see, by the, the church. The story of Galileo is not true. It's false. The story of Galileo, like he said, the Earth is. What about the what about the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition against, I, I against agree, the I, witches? I, I agree with it. I agree with it. If I'm a king, I will do it too. Because simply, you see, uh, 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 somebody betray me. Uh huh. Uh, an occupation came to my country, and they killed they killed millions of my people, and they occupy us for hundreds of years. 
Okay. And then now we are big victorious. Should we go after the one who betray and join the army of the enemy? I mean, is it normal? Why people they think this is a this is a church thing? This is not church mm -hmm. thing. But like, it was a very brutal thing they it did, right? Matter. Like they, they tortured see, people see, and they burned them alive. I, 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 don't, and I don't agree. They killed, with, would be brutal. They, I agree. I agree with. But they killed the Jews as well. The Jews, and they took the side. The Jews, they took the side at that time with the Muslims too. I mean, we have you see history, history, my friend. When the Jews they uh, they took the side of the Persian when they attacked Jerusalem in six fourteen, okay. Then the Christian they took Jerusalem back. What happened to the Jews? The Jews they flee because if they stay, they will be punished. Mm -hmm. And it's very normal. I mean, imagine I come with your enemy to your house. I take your wife, your children as slaves. Mm -hmm. I rape them in the front of your eyes. And then when you became victorious, I expect from you to be merciful. Mm. This is the nature of a human being, you know? This is yeah. very, very normal. I mean, if you speak about justice, even the Old Testament says that the one who kills should be killed. Mm -hmm. So you kill me, I you know they have the right to defend themselves, and they kill you the same as you kill them. Mm -hmm. even, but didn't they even, burn even bitches in, alive listen, because listen, they friend, said if they did even magic? Today, it, even today, say even today, a person who betray his country can be executed in many countries around the world. Well, what about the hit witch hunting? Like that was caused by Christianity as well. What is that? The witch hunting. Well, you know, first of all, you see, this is in the Old Testament. It says if somebody practices witchcraft. You, you kill them, all right? Mm -hmm. Because those people, they are taking advantage of the naive ones and taking and sucking their money. Mm -hmm. So you can say this is absolutely wrong according to your understanding today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you live in that time, you will find how much harmful they used to be society because people, they are very naive and those people, they are taking control of them, sucking their money, controlling their life, destroying, des destroying their life. So mm -hmm. those are very aggressive criminals and... If you don't live in that time, you won't understand what's happening. So, you know, this is a problem always. We try to look at things in the way we see it today. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because today, nobody can really, I mean, who believe in witchcraft? Only the fool. <laughs> All right? But yeah. at that time, people believe in it. And yeah. somebody, he do witchcraft, he control you, he destroy your life. So yeah. they are very harmful for society. It's more disc more dangerous than cancer today. But how do how do they control you? They can't do anything. It's not no, real. No. They control you by making you believe. You believe in them. That's it. They're controlled. But that that's not is that their fault? Like they're telling you, oh, I cast no, a friend, spell on friend. you. It's not about your fault. But what we can do? People they believe in witchcraft. So how we can fight witchcraft? You educate people. You don't kill the witches. No, no, no. no first, people will not believe you anyway. There is no school. Well, that's that's see, the that's the no, right no, thing no, to my, do is no, teach my, people. My, my, my friend, people, people until now they believe in witchcraft. Okay. Until now, which is after which is all, like you said, it's foolish, all right? The science. Okay. After all the science you claim you spoke about, still people believe in witchcraft. So, you you speak about people who lived thousands of years ago, yeah. and you are saying let us educate them. Those people, yeah. they, they 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 get scared from the thunder. Yeah. You know, I think <laughs> the thunder <laughs> is uh, you know this is what the Quran is saying. Uh, that, so yeah. So yeah. so you know. You are judging with the mentality of 2019, a human being who lived thousands of years ago, who have a yeah. very limited knowledge and yeah. li a very limited access to education. As you are talking about, we educate them as if you have schools in every corner and you look, let's, <laughs> let us teach them, you know, like, okay, sit down, let us teach you witchcraft is not true. Okay. First of all, they might kill you even for saying it's not true. Yeah. You might get killed for saying that it's not true. You know what I mean? You are talking about... Yeah. People at the time, they are even even the people they are savage. Mm, so even I to talk see. to them about something, you might be killed for that. Yeah, like the first a bicycle came to Saudi Arabia, the bicycle was arrested. <laughs> the bicycle. The bicycle. They arrested the bicycle. They call it the bike of the <laughs> devil. You know, <laughs> this is the shaitan, shaitan by devil. You know, the, by something they saw something they never saw before. So they arrested the bicycle and they cut it pieces by the sword. They start hitting it by the sword, the Sharia law, order to, to, to kill the, the, the bike. So you are talking about people trying to understand them in your own atmosphere. Yeah. Don't do that. If you want to understand the time of Moses, go back to the time of Moses. You want to understand the time of Jesus, go back to the time of Jesus. Same about Muhammad. So we don't, we, you know, what we, what we always we think about is how in the world they do that at that time? I mean, yeah. those things you are talking about, they are happening even today. Yeah. A guy, he, is, he, made, he, he made a leak uh, in Wika leak. Uh, 
He has worked yeah. in more than 25 countries. Yeah. Okay. So maybe a million years from now, you will say, huh, look how savage they are. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Look how savage. A guy, he just did what? And he did not even lie. He posted something truthful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you judge by your mentality today, but you don't want to see what's happening in the ground. That this, mm. this guy, when he made this leak, he harmed a lot of organizations or a lot of powerful people or even countries, you know? Yeah. Like posting a video about American killing uh, Iraqi. It's just a stupid video, but it is going to do a big harm to America. So because of that, they will go after you and they will put you in jail. Mm. So now, if I say to you, how in the world somebody posts a video, he will spend 20 years in jail. It's yeah, the reason right. why is because they consider that he he put like American assets at risk. No, so no like problem, but my friend, soldiers at the end and of stuff, the day, right? But at the end of the day, in your logic, yeah. it's yeah. just a video. He posted a video, freedom of speech and freedom of express, right? So No, no, I don't I don't believe in absolute no, freedom no, of speech. I, now, I do think I mean, that the consequences. There's many people, they, they, yeah. they support those guys and they say they are right to do that. They have, yeah. they have the right to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This is your belief. I'm not sure. That's I think it's tricky. Yeah. I think it's a tricky, tricky and problem. Just uh, today we saw in the news, a woman, she is going to be uh, uh, lashed 100, I think, 43 lashes and she will stay for 38 years in jail in Iran for asking for human rights. 38 years a guy he is sentenced for 10 years in jail in uh, in militia why because he made a post in twitter yeah a post it's, in twitter. it's terrible yeah okay. so we are in this time 2019 two days ago a person is going to jail for 10 years for insulting islam yeah and yet we are trying to explain what people did for many many centuries away but yet we forgot that nothing really changed you know yeah and what you think is it's evil for them it is good there's many people support this correct mm -hmm. there's many people against it so yeah. what you think for you is evil always consider that there's somebody else he think is good and it yeah. is perfect so when we judge what happened in Spain for me I have to look what happened really in Spain Mm -hmm. If I am a king and there is people who join my enemy and they betray me and they help to kill my people and to destroy my nation and to be under slavery for almost 800 years, what I should do? You have to put yourself in that position. Yeah. And then you will understand what happened. And still, we need to go back on time and remember that this was a war. It was not a party of slow dance. Yeah. So I just want to say um, thank you so much for this opportunity. I was uh, kind of taken back when you called me. I was in the middle of cooking and I was All like, right. what? I'm on live. <laughs> no. So I wasn't expecting that. But I want to I want to say thank you for this uh, discussion. Um, we should do it again sometime. And uh, I would like to also share this video on my channel as well, because I think we had a really good conversation. No problem. You are welcome. My friend. So uh, um, I download my videos yeah. because I don't keep them really in my channel just to let you know. OK. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, and let's do it again sometime. Thank you so much. Anytime, anytime. Feel free to call me anytime. You are welcome. Okay, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.